In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to put KPIs and sparklines in the same graph. I've written about this before, and you can see a screenshot of it in this dashboard. And what I've done is I've created KPIs for the last week's volume of certain stocks, the prior week volume, the change, and the percent change, and then I put a sparkline next to it. Traditionally, what I see people do is create these in multiple worksheets and then try to synchronize them within a dashboard. The problem is, if you have to scroll, the two worksheets do not scroll synchronously. So, uh, I'm going to show you how to build all of this in a single sheet. Okay, so to start, we have a list of stocks that I just randomly picked, and I'm going to look at my stock volume by day. All right, and to make these look like sparklines, I'm going to double click on my axis, choose the independent range, and uncheck include zero. Great. But uh, for my particular example, I only want to look at the last 30 days. So I'm going to first create a calculated field that gives me my latest date. And with LOD calcs in Tableau 9, I can just use the, a max date function, and that's all I need to do. And to prove to you what this is doing, I'm going to option drag this into the view, choose my discrete uh, date, and you'll see I've got August 31st for every single row. So basically what that's doing is it's doing what the old total max function would have done before. So I'm going to drag that out. And now I want to create a calculated field that just gives me the last 30 days. And this is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a date diff function that is going to be at the day level, and it's going to compare my date field to my new max date field. And I want to say, is that less than 30? The reason I'm saying less than 30 is because, of, is because the counting starts at zero. Hit OK, and now you'll see I've got this field called last 30 days. If I drag this into the columns, you'll see I've got a true section and a false section. So these, these are my last 30 days. If I hover over the most recent period, you'll see it looks like it's August the 4th, which isn't 30 days from August 31st, but um, weekends are in here. So if I go back over here to the other side, you'll see this is July 31st. So there's a couple days missing because of weekends. But the counting is working correctly. So to keep just my last 30 days, I'm going to drag it to the filters and choose just true. Excellent. Okay, so from here, I need to create a couple more calculations. I'm going to, I need one to capture uh, my time period for the uh, most recent week, and then my a seven day period before that. So I'm going to uh, duplicate my last 30 days, edit it, and just call it my last week. And in this case, I'm just gonna say, is it less than seven? And then I'm gonna duplicate that again and create it, create one for the prior week. So in this case, I'm going to say, is it greater than or equal to 7? And is it less than 14? So that'll give me that 7-day period before that. And you'll see my calculation is valid, so I'll hit OK. All right, so great. So now I've got my last week, my prior week. Oop, I didn't rename this right, so let me edit that again. Prior week, sorry about that. And now I need to capture the volume for my, for my prior week. So to do that, I'm going to create another calculated field. I'm going to call it last week volume. And here, I'm going to use a lookup function. And I want to look up the window sum. Oops. Window. Oh, spelling wrong. The window sum. And then I want to do if, or I'm sorry, the window sum of the sum if, if I'm in my last week, then give me the volume, else null. Okay, and this goes with this, that goes with that. Uh, and then I need to add in a zero, I'm sorry, another parentheses, and then comma zero. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to right click on this, make it discrete, and drag this to my rows. And you can see I've got 23.9 23 million. And how do I know that's the right number? Well, why don't I take my last week 
and put it in the columns. And if I lasso these, you'll see I get 23901475. That matches exactly what's in my column here. And if I maybe randomly check another one down here, you'll see 205643, perfect. All right, so that calculation is working beautifully. So then what we want to do is we want to duplicate that and we'll call this one the prior week volume. And then in this case, I'm going to use, everything's going to be exactly the same, so I'm going to, I'm going to change this last here to prior. Hit OK. And you'll see it's still discrete because I just duplicated it. Put that up here in the view. And now I've got my prior week. Excellent. OK, so the next thing I need to calculate is my change. So I'm going to, again, right click, create calculated field, and I'm going to just call it change. And it's going to be my last, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, my last week minus my prior week volume. Hit OK. And here I should get, it looks like a number around like 1.7 million. So let's right click on change and make it discrete so that we can put it in the columns, or I'm sorry, in the rows. And I get minus 1705. Perfect. All right, so then the last thing we want to do is calculate a percent change. And that's just going to simply be my change. Oops. It's going to be the sum of my change divided by the sum of prior week volume. And that's not going to be quite right because these are already aggregations, my mistake. So I need to get rid of the sum. And now I have my change versus prior week. I'm going to right click on that and change my default number format to maybe 0.1% and make it discrete. Drag that into my view. And now I have my four KPIs. This looks really good. Now, one of the things I need to do is do a little bit of alignment because I like my numbers to be right aligned. So I'm gonna right click and choose format, right click on my volume and choose format, and I'm gonna right align. Do the same thing for my prior week, right align. Do the same thing for my change, right align. And same thing for my change percent. I'm going to right align that. Perfect. Okay, it looks like I need to make my header a little bit bigger. Uh, so I'm gonna drag that down a little. Okay, there we go. So we're looking pretty good. Um, and now to uh, maybe one of the other things that I like to do is I like to have a little dot on the end of my spark lines to represent the uh, week over week change. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to create a, another calculated field called, uh, let's just call it the last day. So I'm going to duplicate my last week, edit that and call it last day. And this time I just want to say, is it less than one or is it equal to zero? Either way, it does the same thing. And then I want to duplicate my last week volume. I'll call this my last day volume. And then here I'm going to just change this to be last day. Okay. And this one though, I want to be continuous and I'm gonna drag it onto the secondary axis. All right, so now we get two lines, which isn't really what I was hoping for. So I'm going to right click on that and synchronize. And what I wanna do there is, actually this isn't quite the way that I was hoping it to be. You can see that I've got a blue line now for every one of my, uh, every one of my days because I'm using the, uh, the, the lookup function. So what I want to do here then instead is uh, if I want to look at my last day volume, I just want to say, I don't want to do a window sum. I just want to do the sum if here. So let's get rid of those. Is that the right number of parentheses? It looks like it. Okay, and now we get just a single record. Okay, so if I go back into that again, you'll see what I did is I'm just doing the, if I'm on my last day, give me the sum of the volume. Okay, perfect. So what I do from here is I go over to my measure names and I remove everything. I go to my all on my marks card. And then I'm going to go to my second uh, mark and make it a circle. And okay, maybe I like that size. I see my indicator showing up here, so I'm gonna hide that. Sorry, I'm kind of moving all over the place. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll make my line 
Maybe I'll make my line like a dark gray, maybe make it a little bit thinner, just because that's how I like them. And then perhaps for my last day, I want to color code it by the percent, the week over week change. So I'm going to drag my percent change to the color shelf. And you'll see that it's still discrete, so I need to actually switch it to continuous. And now I've got little dots on the end. And uh, I don't want to use red and green together. I like to use red and black for financial. So I'm going to change my color palette to red and black, diverging. Force the center at zero. Hit OK. And now you can see whether we are up or down versus the prior week. All right, so we've got pretty much everything we want. Um, now the only thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and hide my headers. Maybe do some cleanup. I'm going to right click and choose format. Uh, I'm going to maybe change my font to Century Gothic because it's my favorite. Oops, wrong one. Century Gothic. Maybe make it 10 point. Okay, something like that. All right, uh, so that looks pretty good. Maybe I will go ahead and get rid of my grid lines. Maybe get rid of my zero lines. And, uh, and we look like we're in pretty good shape. Okay, so the last thing that I want to do, uh, well, there's a couple more things I want to do. Maybe I want to, um, I want to go ahead and create a header on here because I'm going to go ahead and hide my header for my spark for my dates. I'm sorry, hide the axis. So I'm going to create a dummy header. So I'm going to call it, I'm just going to call this header. And I'm just going to say uh, last 30 days as of, and then plus uh, sh the string of max date. Something like that. That looks like it's valid. And then I'm going to drag that to the columns. And now I have a nice little header. So I'm going to hide the field labels. And you'll see I've got a nice little header here, which, which tells the user what they're looking at. OK, so I'm going to drag this down again. It looks like it resized it. And it looks like I need to format these and set the alignment at the bottom. OK. Lastly, maybe I want to allow the user to sort by any of these four KPIs. So right now, they're just in alphabetical order. But perhaps I want to allow them to choose any of these instead. So I'm going to create a parameter called my sort by. Maybe I'll call it, uh, yeah, I'll just call it sort by. And it's going to have four items listed in it. The first one is going to be the last week volume. The second one will be the prior week volume. The change or the percent change. Okay, and you can see now we've got a parameter here. I'm going to show that. But the parameter is not doing anything now because we haven't told Tableau what to do with it. So I need to create a calculated field and I'm going to call it my sort by metric. And what I'm going to do here is a little case statement. I'm going to say case, uh, and it's going to be on my sort by, when last week volume, then last week, last week volume, when prior week, volume, then prior week volume, when change, then change, else percent change. End. Okay, and you'll see here we've got that, but uh, when I hit OK, I now want to also, I need to make this discrete. I'm going to put this as my first item in my row shelf. And you'll see now, uh, because I've picked change, it's now sorting. If I pick last week volume, you'll see the one with the highest, vo the lowest volume is first. So really, I want these to go in the opposite order. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a negative in front of this whole thing. that. And now you'll see my largest volume is first. Go to prior week and you'll see Apple was still first. Look at my change. 
and you'll see now Netflix is first. And if I look at my percent change, you'll see that Tableau's stock rose the most over the last week. Excellent. So I can go ahead and hide the header for that one. And it's basically disappeared from my view. It looks like I need to format this guy here and put that label down. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. So from here, I'm just going to call this my stocks. From here, I can just throw it on the dashboard. And I'm going to maybe show a title and call it How Are My Stocks Performing? And maybe I will make this my consistent font, Century Gothic. And then I'm going to just drag my stocks into the view. I don't really need to see my percent change, so I'm good there. Uh, I'm going to hide the title on that. Okay, so from here, I think I want to have maybe my title and my parameter on the same line so that my space is a little better utilized. So I'm going to throw a horizontal container in here, put my title in the container along with my parameter, maybe drag this over, and then drag this up. Okay, so we get something like that. And then maybe I'll left justify my, my um, and then lastly, I think I need to format my parameters to be, again, make my font consistent. So, okay, so there we have it. Um, that is the way that you can put both KPIs and a spark line or any other chart really that you want in the same dashboard. I'm sorry, in the same worksheet. So I uh, hope this helps. And if you have any suggestions for future tips, just let me know.